Hi there, Nigel Saunders here. Today we're back with two more selections for the 2018 Club Fall Show. Today I'll be working on two Sarissa forests. One is a small forest with ancient ruins and the other is styled like African acacia trees. Lots of detail work coming up today in the Bonsai Zone. I'm going to start today's work with my mini Sarissa forest. This is a new monk. I got him at the Canadian National Exhibition. He's quite a bit larger than the old one I had. So I think the scale of the forest works really well with him. I've got a wooden base here that I'd like to display both the forest and the monk on top of. I don't like the wood color, so I think I'll paint that and I'll have to decide on a color. Black would be the natural color to paint the wooden base. However, this display will be on top of a black tablecloth, so the black base may be totally lost. So I might want to change it to a slightly lighter color. I think I'll try painting it with red oxide primer, and I'll see how that looks. If I don't like it, I can then paint over with a top coat of a different color. I thought about staining the wood and then putting a coating of urethane over it, but it's not a good enough wood and the joints aren't the greatest on it, so I think paint will look better. So here I go. While the base is drying, I can do the final pruning of the moss and the trees in this little miniature forest. I'll start by having a good look at the forest. I can see the moss has grown quite long in some areas, so that'll need pruning. There's a lot of shoots that are growing quite strongly and they'll need pruning. And the rest is looking pretty good. I think, um, yeah, just the moss and some pruning and the forest will be in good shape for the show. All right, I'll start the pruning. So I'm pruning a lot of these shoots back to, you know, a set of leaves, trying to keep some green on the tips, trying to get a tree-like shape to them. I think I'm going to take this main tree down even shorter, so I'll remove this shoot and take this one off. That's a good height for this front tree, but the back ones are too tall now, so I'll have to prune those back in height also. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take this shoot off too. It's just too long and straight. Take this one back, and this one back. And this one off. There's one I can take off here. It's interfering with the main tree. That's looking much better. I'll show you that from the front now. There's a view from the front. So you can see the heights a lot better. These trees are very young. They're only beginning life as bonsai trees. So they're not that developed yet, but uh, when they're placed in a forest like this with a nice composition, they look quite nice. I'll prune the moss next. Just taking the fuzzy tops off clearing it away around the trunks so it doesn't look too overgrown. I do want this to look, you know, jungle-like. So I'm going to leave tufts of it quite long, especially around the building. I'm hoping someday the moss starts growing up the building. That would look really nice. I get just as much fun out of pruning this little forest of cuttings as I do some of my bigger trees. It's uh, really nice making little miniature forests like this. They don't take up much room either. So I'm just pruning some of the areas of the moss down quite short. That makes you know the clumps of the moss look larger. I have a stone in the planting here that I want to prune so you can see it. Prune the moss around it moss is really long back in here. 
quite jungle like back here so I'll, I'll leave that I'll just prune around it a bit it's good to have a contrast you know some really wild looking moss and some that's pruned nice and short I'll leave it growing up the trunks of the trees because it looks more jungle like After the show, I'll prune it away from the trunks. There's a close-up of the forest all pruned up, looking nice and miniature. I think the display base should be dry by now, so I'll get it out and we'll see how it looks with the planting. Here's a look at the base now with the red oxide primer, and I don't like it at all. It uh, doesn't tone with anything. Um, I think I need to go like a maybe a gray color to kind of match the pot, uh, maybe a bluey gray. So I'll, I'll try that. I've got gray primer, so I can mix some blue paint with it and try and get something that uh, tones. Blue is the opposite of orange, so it would, uh, it would work quite well, I think. Uh, the orange on the monk would tone nicely with the blue base and the blue pot. So I'll try it out. I'm going to mix up my gray color now. So my base will be gray primer and then I'll add some blue colors to it to make it a bluey gray. I think that'll be plenty, probably too much. I'm adding the blue to the gray now. That should do it. I'll mix that up and see what color I get. That's looking pretty good. It's a nice bluey gray color. I think that will do it. Okay. Time to start painting. If this gray doesn't look good, I think I'll just sand it and paint it black. And it'll just disappear in with the tablecloth, but it'll still be there. I'll let that coat of paint dry, and then we'll come back and try it out. I'm trying out the new base color with the monk and the pot and the stand and I think it looks quite good. Matches the pot nicely. If I had a different color pot I'd probably have to change the color of the base but uh, for now I think this will look good for the show. I'll call the Sarissa Forest done. I'll put it back in the greenhouse until the club show. It's time now to work on my larger Sarissa forest that's styled to look like African acacia trees. Last year with this planting, I had a fairly dry looking landscape with a road and the Land Rover and the green kopi or hill in the background. I'll have to try and decide what kind of look I want for the landscape this year. 
But first I'll start by pruning up the trees. I'll start the pruning by getting the canopy back in shape. I've got a lot of shoots that have grown quite long. So I'm not sure if I should use my hedge pruning, just scissor cutting it, or if I should go in with scissors and prune each individual branch. I'm thinking if I do the hedge pruning and then I go back in after and fix up any leaves that are cut in half or any branches that could be further refined. So I think I will. I'll do the hedge pruning to get the overall shape and then I'll go in and fix up any problem areas I see. So here I go. My height. My, my canopy, I want to prune it this sort of triangular shape a very shallow triangle and I, I was looking at the photos and they're kind of flatter around the edges and then it kind of curves up and has a rounded triangular shape so that's the shape I'm going to try and achieve so this is my highest point I'm just going to take a little bit off here about there. I think someone's laying an egg. So that's got my top pruned back now. Now I'll start shaping the curve. So Kind of flatter at the edges. Like that. After pruning, these new shoots will come in quite quickly, probably before the show even. A healthy tree reacts very quickly to any pruning. So, we're going to get our triangular shape now. So the triangular shape is going to be curved, come down, and then sort of flatten out a bit. I was just inside studying all my photographs of acacia trees for reference, getting some ideas for what I want to do with the moss. And I have an idea of what I want to do. But I won't get ahead of myself. That'll come in the future. Okay, let's see how it's looking. So it's starting to get a, a triangular shape. A little more pruning here. I'll come out front and see how it's looking. Definitely making progress. All right, let's see what that looks like now. I think that's getting close to the shape I want. Last time I worked on the tree, I pruned the top profile to kind of an oval shape. And after I did that, it looked a little too even. So right now it's kind of a little rougher looking, a little more random. 
and I like that better. It looks a little more natural. There are some shoots from the top view that need trimming like here, maybe some of these ones here, but I'm not gonna make it you know, neat and tidy like an oval. So I'll just prune off kind of a few of them that are sticking out way too long. I'll prune up the rest of the trees in the planting to get a similar type canopy as much as I can. Again, these are fairly young trees, so they're not that developed yet. Okay, I think all the rough pruning is done now. My next task will be to pull out some of these weeds in the back area here. There's not a lot of weeds back here, but there's a few. Try and get them out, roots and all, if I can. There we go. I've been growing this branch on the tree to look like a dead branch, so I'll remove all the leaves so it looks like it's been dead for many years. When I was at the Canadian National Exhibition this year, I bought some more pruning shears. So I'll, I'll give them a try today, see how they work. I'll start with the gold ones. They're nice, they're nice and fine. You can get in here and cut leaves off. Okay, they passed the test. Next is my seahorse ones. I think that's a seahorse. Let's try that out. Oh, it cuts well too. Again, nice and fine for getting in there and moving leaves. Yeah, I like those. Next up is my straight pointy ones. Let's give those a try. Oh, they cut nicely too. I get these at the, uh, you know, the surplus surgical supply places. These are only about $2 each. They work really well for doing small, tiny pruning jobs. Working on little trees, that kind of work. The last ones I want to try are these spring-loaded ones. I think these are mainly used for cutting leaves off, but let's see how they work. Oh, they work quite well. So these would be nice if you're doing leaf removal, really fast action so you can, you know, defoliate a tree nice and quickly. All the tools performed well, so I'm happy to add those to my toolbox. Now you can see my tree has a dead branch on it. It'll regrow, it'll keep growing, so it's not dead, it just looks dead for the show. My next task will be to trim the underside of the canopy, any leaves that are growing, you know, lower down on the branches. So that just leaves me with like a thin shell of foliage on top of the tree. So I'll go in underneath the trees and remove any leaves that are too far down in the canopy or too low in the canopy. Here's some leaves here that are too low. So I'll come in and just prune that shoot off like that. The main tree doesn't have a lot of leaves and foliage growing underneath the canopy, but the younger ones do. This tree has a dense enough canopy on top that not much grows down below the canopy. These trees, the canopy is a little lighter, so I get a lot of growth underneath the trees. So I'll go in and clean those up. I'm also pruning off any leaves that are hanging down to try and keep it clean underneath the canopy. I think that's got it. 
My next step is to remove the moss under the base of the tree. I was looking at my reference photos of acacia trees and trees that have a dense canopy like this usually just have bare soil underneath the tree. Sometimes you get the odd bush growing in the shade but very sparse underneath the trees. So here I go. I'll just start picking the moss away. I'll try leaving a few clumps of moss to look like bushes. See how it looks and uh, if it doesn't look good we can remove them later on. I may go for a dry type grass look with this landscape. I, uh, I really like that look when you have the green leaves on the tree and the straw colored grass underneath it. I do want to keep my landscape around the kopi nice and green because they usually have like a little water spring in, in the rocks that keeps the area green and the rest of the landscape is sort of a you know a straw colored or a tan colored drier look. And I would do that just by leaving the planting in the sun and letting the moss dry out. I, uh, I would have to spray the moss, mist it around the rocks to keep that area green but uh, the rest will go brown quite easily. You just don't mist it, don't water it. I'll water around the base of the trees but uh, I won't let the trees dry out but just the moss. In the full sun the moss can dry out quite quickly, go brown. Which might be the look I'm after. You can see the red soil from last year. Looks quite nice still. That's just the turfus from the ball diamond, that nice red color. I'm saving some of these clumps of moss in case I need to add some back. I do want to add my roadway back in here for the Land Rover to travel on. So I'll do that next. I'll come in here and mark the roadway. I'm going to start it off wider and then taper in uh, width as it goes to the back of the planting to give kind of a forced perspective to the road. And then I should be able to peel this moss off just like that. The roadway is roughed in now, it goes back and around to the Land Rover back here. Now I have to decide what color. Right now it's that reddish turfus color, which looks like some of the soil in Africa, that reddish soil. But I think I want something lighter, a drier, dustier looking road. So I'm going to try my sand that I mixed up for my uh, Portulacaria Afroforest, that mixture of playground sand and white industrial sand and I'll try putting it in the roadway and see how it looks. All right, I'll add the soil now. I will probably add a strip of moss down the middle of the roadway so you just see the two tire marks each side and there's a bit of you know, greenery in between them. So right now the road looks very artificial. It, there's too much of a contrast between the moss and the road. So I'll be picking away this moss and pruning it to get, you know, get rid of that sharp edge between the sand and the moss. I'm going to water the sand now just to level it all off. And this helps blend it also. So I'll keep picking away at the moss and, you know, refining it so again so it doesn't look like a big blob of moss but looks more like individual bushes or clumps of grass. Make it look more miniature. I'll continue working on the roadway and the moss making it look more realistic and miniature. I'm trying to find a nice balance between greenery and desert. 
I'll add the sand to the next section now. And then give it a water. I'll continue working away at the landscape, making it look more realistic and miniature, and then we'll come back and see how it's looking. I picked all the moss away and applied the sand, so now it's time to give it a water and see what it looks like. So here I go. Here's a look at the forest. It's looking pretty good. I uh, need to go in and clean up the trunk. It's getting a lot of algae and moss on it. So I'll get that cleaned up. So I'll just come in here and brush it all down with just plain water, rainwater. This will make the trunk look brighter, give it more of a desert feel rather than a lush tropical feel. I've finished the work on my African style Sarissa forest. Let's go in and have a look at it. My two Sarissa forests are in good shape for the club show this coming weekend. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for watching today in the Bonsai Zone.